All right, day three, let's do this. Hello everyone, Easy Astronomy here, and today we're going to be talking about, as promised, the actual telescopes. Yesterday we talked about why mounts are bad, and the day before that we talked about mounts. And so today we're descending to the slightly less complicated topic of choosing a telescope for your astrophotography or viewing needs. I'm going to assume that because you're here, you know what a telescope is. Now, if you already have a mount with a telescope on it, you're in luck. You don't have to do anything. The telescopes sold by most makers are typically at a fair price. And really what you would have to worry about would be the quality of the mount, which in this case, if you've not done so already, you should definitely go check out my other video I posted two days ago. I really think it's one of my best work yet. But that being said, the only concern with telescopes is to be sure to get one that doesn't overtax the weight limit on the mount, or else it really won't track properly. Additionally, one more thing to think about is whether or not you have a refractor or a reflector. A reflector uses mirrors to bounce light into your camera or eyeball, whereas a lens magnifies. As a general rule, reflectors are better for viewing planetary objects, while refractors can be useful in astrophotography, especially focusing on and taking pictures of DSOs. So just some things to think about as you journey through the reflector versus refractor mountain of statistics that are available on the internet. A few things to keep in mind is that reflectors are often much bigger and more unwieldy than their frequently lightweight and compact lens-based counterparts. Now, two years ago, I was an astrophotography beginner myself, and I went with the Orion ED80T, which was a refractor, for the reasons I said before. And now owning one of the bigger and bulkier reflectors, I can see and understand that what I read were backed by legitimate concerns. Also, reflectors require alignment of the mirrors, or collimation. As I showed earlier in my Dobsonian video, I found collimation pretty easy on that telescope, but of course it varies by make and model of the telescope in addition to the strews used. And other than that, the prices just go up as the telescope gets better, and the lenses get thicker, the diameter of the mirror gets bigger, etc, etc. Just selects the one that is closest to your price range, as telescopes themselves aren't conventionally modified, and plop it onto your carefully chosen mount and enjoy. Oh, and one more thing before your attention span entirely snaps. I've posted links to both reflectors, refractors in the description below, and even some Cassegrains. So feel free to check those out, but also be sure to check your local market. Astronomy is an aging hobby, and sad as it is, I've seen all the time estate sales and Craigslist posts from owners who had died or simply got too old to take care of their spokes anymore. But anyway, in good condition, their loss can totally be your gain. So I hope you found that helpful. I tried to tone down the info a little bit less than from my previous mounts video. So if you enjoyed that, please let me know. Also do all the things that say you liked the video if you liked the video. Like, comment, subscribe, etc. And I'll see you tomorrow. This has been Easy Astronomy, and here's to dark nights and clear skies.